This precisely positioned plethora of parts and projects packs pizzazz into my principal photography. Problem. Centralizing spiffy stuff in a single section subjects stream spectators to stale cinematography. Solution. Build a 20 square foot Internet of Things RGB wall sculpture and wire it up to my cardiovascular system. Let's get it on! Robots, cyborgs, and meat puppets, welcome to Void Star Lab, where the only engineering is over-engineering. It only took us like 45 episodes, but we are finally building a project that you can actually make yourself. This is the Chromance. It's got pretty colors. It's got real cybernetics. It has got heartstring tugging personal relevance that'll strengthen our parasocial relationship. This episode is sponsored by Emotibit, and don't skip yet, this isn't the plug, this is the premise. Their eponymous product, called the Emotibit, that's what eponymous means, a wearable board jam-packed with biometric sensors. Emotibit's halfway through the Emotibit's Kickstarter campaign, and they have already tripled their goal. But I actually reached out to them because their entire company gives me nostalgia. Nine years ago, when I was barely a maker at all, it was 2012, and it was the golden age of hardware startups. Gullible consumer drones would dump plump wads of pre-recession disposable income into almost anything that made them feel like society was getting closer to flying cars. Forget practicality, forget utility, just connect your water bottle to the internet. It was magical. Here's a radar board that sees through walls. Here's an armband that measures muscle activity. And here's a notorious camera-equipped wearable computer that, despite what my commenters say, I do not wear in all of my episodes. These products were not designed to solve problems. They were sold to DIY developer dorks so they could build cool stuff. You would make your Kickstarter first and your go-to-market strategy I don't know, I don't know, man. Emotibit, the company and the product, take me back to my first hacks. Here comes the plug. The Emotibit is a wearable platform jam-packed with high-quality sensors that quantify your bod. Stack on an Adafruit feather, hook up a battery, strap it on, and get 16 biometric signals over Wi-Fi in real time. That's what you're seeing right here. Optical pulse oximeter, PPG, skin-resistant sweat sensor, temperature, motion, and more. I don't need technology to tell me that I'm a sweaty, overheated ball of anxiety, but it is the future, so why the hell not? Behavioral research, expressive cybernetic projects, and tense encounters with your coworkers start right here. Join the Kickstarter today, link is in the description, tell them I sent you. End of plug. Today, we're gonna visualize a few of the stress-related signals from the Emotibit on this huge full-color wall art. I'm calling this thing the Chromance. Rainbow colors, heart biometrics, get it? It's better than Thunderfinger. This project looks flashy, but it's actually a really easy project to build. Here's how I made it. These line segments are just aluminum extrusion that's designed for under-cabinet lighting. I cut it into manageable pieces, slid in some Adafruit Dot Star LED strips, and snapped on some diffusers. These segments are glued into 3D printed hub pieces that look a lot like those little weird table things that come with your delivery saws, but they hold the entire thing about 20 millimeters off the wall. These allow the light to spread out behind the project and make it look a lot bigger and more impressive than it really is. I printed these hubs in carbon fiber PLA to get that sleek matte look. I didn't buy an entire spool of matte PLA for this dumb project. It's left over from last week's video on every single filament. I'm using expensive dot star strips instead of the cheaper NeoPixels because they pulse the LEDs at a much faster rate. I also, you know, happened to find 12 meters of dot stars for 80% off in Micro Center's clearance bin, but that had nothing to do with it. You could build this project using NeoPixels instead. The APIs are almost identical, so it should only take a few minutes to modify the code. The way these LED strips are wired up is a total mess, and my old nemesis is to blame. Math. Given any combination of vertices connected by lines, you can draw the entire diagram in one continuous line if, and only if, exactly two vertices have an odd number of lines. For instance, this diagram, you can totally draw it in one line. This diagram, samesies. This one, the one on our wall, hell no. 14 of the 25 vertices are odd, so it is impossible to route without running some wires over some LED strips. I basically connected every power and ground line at every node together, because parallel power rails boost the current carrying capacity. The Chromance has 40 strips of 14 LEDs. Each individual LED can draw 60 milliamps, so in total this thing can draw a phenomenal amount of current. All we have to do is limit how many LEDs are on at once, and how bright they are, and we won't start a house fire. 
The strips are routed out the bottom node and into this ESP32. That's right, not a Teensy, because Wi-Fi is part of the art. There isn't anything on this board beside the ESP32 module, and we don't need to put any sensors on the board because we're connecting it to the emote of it, which is loaded with sensors. And that's it, that's, that's basically the project. All right, fine, there's software involved. This ripple effect is a lot simpler than it looks. These are just dots that travel along the segments at a fixed speed. When the dot arrives at a node, it consults a hidden variable called aggression. And the higher its aggression, the tighter turn it tries to make. Here are a few bursts of angry ripples. And here are some chill-ass ripples lulled into complacency by an endless supply of disposable consumer goods shipped in at prices impossible for domestic producers to compete with because of overly favorable international trade agreements and poor working conditions abroad. I create the pulse effect by picking a node and firing a ripple down every segment connected to it. The secret sauce of the project is that I don't turn any of the LEDs off. Instead, I fade every single LED by 1% each loop. That gives the ripples smooth tails without ever having to track the ripples path through the network. This bit of code enables over the air wireless updating, which isn't part of the project, but it is really nice because I don't have a 15 foot long USB cable. Finally, we are at the business end, receiving and processing biometrics from the emote of it. Let's disengage from my project and look at the emote of it itself. This is equipped with a pulse oximeter, which lets us infer heart rate, hydration, blood oxygen, and other cardiovascular data by measuring the color of our blood. We have a humidity and two temperature sensors to pick up our skin temperature. We have these snaps that detect electrodermal activity. By measuring your skin's electrical resistance, this can detect emotional intensity, positive or negative. This also has a nine axis IMU because it's 2021, even toothbrushes have a nine axis IMU. Seriously though, if your body is moving, the sensors are being jiggled around and flailed and mashed against your skin. And this is important for figuring out when our readings can't be trusted. So I'm going to strap this on my finger because I am just too hairy and Jewish to get arm measurements and we'll open up Emotivit software. From here, we can snoop on the data in real time or for, like we're doing in this project, relay it via open sound control. OSC was designed for musical instruments, but it works fine for sensor reading. All you have is synthesizers, everything looks like a keyboard. So we've got our flashy rainbow wall art, we've got some biometric data, let's link them together. Heartbeat detection is really simple. We just watched the reflected infrared levels and when they drop sharply, that means my heart just squirted dark oxygenated blood through my blood vessels. Electrodermal activity in and of itself doesn't mean a lot. There are just too many factors that determine your skin's resistance, but when it abruptly falls, it means your skin has suddenly become moist. Now your Ekron sweat glands react to both positive and negative emotion. I'm a YouTuber in 2021, so it's safe to assume that all of my strong emotions are bad ones. Skin temperature corresponds to body temperature, but it doesn't match it. When you're fully relaxed, your skin is about 33 Celsius, and as you get more and more riled up, it approaches your core temperature of 37 Celsius. By the way, do you know that's why our body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit, because 98.6 Fahrenheit height is just 37 Celsius. Freedom temperature. Whenever the infrared reading plummets, we fire ripples outward from the center with color proportional to my skin temperature. Whenever my skin resistance sharply falls, we send ripples from the perimeter inwards, and the sharper the drop, the brighter the ripples. So yeah, my Emotibit measures my vitals and sends it to the PC. The oscilloscope app forwards it to the Chromance over open sound control. The Chromance interprets the data and then visualizes it for the world to see in brightly colored rainbow LEDs. Neato! Nearly all of the work in this project went into mounting the strips to the segments, gluing them to the hubs, and soldering everything together. In this respect, it's a lot like eating a wristwatch. It isn't particularly difficult, but it is time consuming. If you'd like to learn more about the Emotibit and maybe even grab one to integrate into your own project, hit the link in the description. If you want to add some chromance to your life or design your own Rombiel tessellated wall art, hit the other link in the description for source code and instructions. So, why my sudden interest in the lab's other wall? I plan to be in front of a monitor mounted face cam more often. See, I'm going to start streaming regularly right here on YouTube so you can join me at my workbench as we build projects together for future videos and just for fun. You might have noticed that lately I have been uploading fewer videos than usual. I've been posting a bit less often. That aggressive weekly schedule was forcing me to pick less ambitious projects and finish them too fast to write instructions. By doing fewer videos and more streams, you get better projects that are easier to make yourself and you get 
the opportunity to see how the sausage gets made. Man, I could totally go for a sausage right now. Sausage. My patrons used to get an exclusive behind the scenes look at my projects, but now that everyone is gonna get that, patrons will get exclusive access to the recorded streams. If you're not subscribed or you're not a patron, now is an excellent time. Subscribers get notified about the videos, patrons get to watch ones they miss, and uh, I get to eat. The first project stream will be announced in the next few weeks. None of this would be possible without our stupendous patrons, whose support is the oxygen that feeds the project's mitochondria. That's right, the powerhouses of the project. Our Void Star collaborators are Chuck Faduk Smaldong, CMD, possibly command, and I'm not Betacore, and their incredible generosity makes my heart beat quantifiably faster. I've hidden their names somewhere in this episode, and I'm really proud of this one, so go find it. Our sweat gland stimulating lab assistants are Brian Santero, Frantic Fanatic, Victor Vaughn, Daniel Cadwell, Dinkle, unfinisher of unnecessary parts and buyer of projects, who thought they could pull a fast one on the old Zaccarino. Nino Gansitano, Joe Harp, Azundo, James Berry, Gregory Jones, Jonathan Holland, Michael Dunn, Robert Burris, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Paul Rector, Taranak, Brad Cox, 360 No Scope Lord 9000 Deluxe Pro 69 Sniper 360 Quick Scope Supreme 420, whose name I completely nailed two takes in a row. Uh, C. Harris, Olivier Yiptong, Akelia, Varka, the world's greatest drone pilot, bot grinder FPV, my dog is a bear. Bill Schooler, Rusty Flute, Anthony Mincarelli, good fuck, Zanforian, Michael Roche, one of my fellow Jew boys, Brian Glazerson, Cyrus Drager, Roger Pinkham, Powerful CCH, Andrew Patton, and last but not least, the patron single-handedly responsible for getting me almost as much hate mail as that time I bleeped out the phrase flame retardant, the Antifa. Somebody give me 20 bucks, call yourself Black Lives Matter, and watch my comment section go thermonuclear. Also, thanks to our Discord mods, Techniac, My Fair Julie, and Billy Rubin. Also, smooches to Brooke, the filmer of my episodes and the only Wi-Fi I ever need, but mostly thanks to you for watching all the way and maybe even for replicating my project. Wear your heart on your sleeve, but visualize it on your wall, and I'll see you in the future.